China is the second largest economy in the world and cannot be ignored. And moreover, it continues to grow at over 6%, which is faster than most of the developed market economies in the world. Now, just because it's growing at over 6%, it doesn't mean this year that the stock market will grow at over 6%, but over a period of years, that growth must be reflected in growth in the value of investments, in my view. The new China opportunities remain incredibly exciting for us. When we visit companies these days, we're seeing huge amounts of automation, heaps of research and development, a lot of innovation. A lot of this actually has been driven by Beijing or the government themselves through the Made in China 2025 plan. And essentially, this is encouraging manufacturers to climb up the value chain Instead of being the world's largest shoe manufacturer or toy manufacturer, the government's really trying to encourage Chinese companies to create the next generation of products. And in fact, we are definitely seeing this on the ground. A core thrust of the portfolio, and I think you know, a big part of the investment story in China is around consumption. You know, that remains the same. We've seen somewhat of a slowdown recently, but still this is an area of the economy that's going to grow faster than the overall economy on the back of just natural development of the middle class. An area that's held up quite well is actually luxury. A company that I own in the portfolio that's set to benefit from that growth in luxury is called Sukur. And they're the leading e-commerce player focused purely um, on luxury. I do think when you think about the shifts that will happen in, in asset or equity allocation over the next 10 years, the growth towards China is going to be you know, the biggest shift. Um, you know, we're talking about a country that's sort of a mid-teens percentage of global GDP, which has been, you know, at, up until very recently, less than 3% of global market. So I think the, the, rating, or the, the, the indices recognize that, and that's why China will continue to grow as a portion of, of global indices. Um, so, I think it's also fair to say that a lot of you know, investors who you know, could safely ignore China in the past, that's going to be much more difficult for them to do uh, going forward. And here we just, it's actually a slow process of inclusion of, of the A shares uh, into the indices. Um, you can see the gradual process, we've got a 10% inclusion uh, that we saw uh, in June, uh, that moves to 20% in November. If we have a full inclusion, we're looking at China representing over 40% of, uh, of global emerging markets. <coughs> so, um, you know, there's no question that, you know, when you think about passive money, uh, etc., um, you know, there's more and more, more and more investors are going to have to look at uh, a greater allocation uh, to China over time. This year, we've introduced a new formal discount control policy in order to keep the discount that the shares trade to their net asset value uh, in single digits, in other words, below 10%. We publish the net asset value per share every day and the shares trade at a value that reflects supply and demand in the market. But we think it's in everybody's interest to keep that discount as low as possible. And so now that it has been trading at less than 10% for over four months, uh, we are able to step into the market and buy shares to keep it there in normal market conditions. I want to own mispriced stocks. I want to own companies that I think are undervalued. Uh, and therefore, I think you know, this, this strategy you know, will play out over time. Um, to, again, to do that, you really need to leverage a significant team on the ground. And that's where we continue to reinvest in our group of analysts uh, to find these opportunities, but also monitor them, make sure the companies uh, are executing um, on the potential uh, that they have. Um, and finally, um, you know, obviously, uh, again, I, I touched on risk management, which you know, I think we, we assess uh, through making sure companies are executing, but I think it's also important to have a long-term perspective. Um, I'm a firm belief, believer in, in, in efficient markets. Uh, as long as companies grow earnings, uh, that will get recognized um, over time in stock prices. Our approach to unlisted companies, so those companies which have yet to come to market, is pretty much the same investment approach and process we undertake with listed companies. The opportunity set is vast and unlisted, but you do need to have the resources. So in our case, our analyst team and our local knowledge in terms of discovering these opportunities. And then once we enter them, ensuring that we value them properly, as well as always being in touch with management to decipher and determine whether the strategy that the management team has in place is being implemented. There are a number of different ways of holding the trust, whether it's in an ISA, 
a SIP, a junior ISIP you're saving for your children or your grandchildren, or just in a general investment account.